Hello guys, welcome to SWK Tutorials. Today I will be teaching you guys how to convert these planes from this to this using displacement mapping and without any modeling. This tutorial is divided into two sections. In the first section, I will teach you guys the concepts of displacement and how the displacement works in V-Ray using this example. And in the second section, I will teach you guys how to treat your image, this image, simple plain image in Photoshop so that you can have this kind of great result. Displacement mapping is a trick to add details to your geometry without having to model it. It actually modifies the actual geometry. Note, it is different from bump mapping which is a lighting shading effect only. There are two ways to do the displacement. First, you can place the displacement map on the material. Second, add displacement to geometry itself, which is a recommended method and it has more controls. I will discuss the second method. For displacement to work, you need a grayscale image. Color image will work too, but Maya will internally convert it into grayscale before using it in displacement. First, I will use displacement value example this one and then in the second section I will teach you this one. To make the displacement work, select mesh, right click on this icon and choose apply single V-Ray displacement node to selection or if you have multiple you can select this one. This creates a new V-Ray displacement node in the outliner with mesh in it. You can also place multiple or other meshes by dragging in it. Select V-Ray Displacement node and in the Attribute Editor, click this checker box in front of Displacement Map, browse the image, three questions should pop up in your mind right now. First, how displacement works, second, how to make displacement result better, save memory and render time. Third, how to increase the height of displacement. We will discuss the second question first, how to make the displacement render better. Currently, displacement is not accurate. If you look closely, you can't read the brightness 100% properly. To fix this, click on render setting icon, go to settings tab, click here, and decrease your edge length to 1. Render again. Remember, the lower the edge length value, the accurate the displacement will be. But be careful, render time will increase. Save the result. You can see here, by decreasing the edge length from 4 to 1, this is my result. It is very very accurate. Edge length 4 edge length 1 but look at the time when edge length was 4 this render was 46 seconds but on edge length 1 the time has increased now question number 3 how to increase the height of displacement simply increase the amount value and render amount 1 Amount 3, Amount 1, Amount 3. Brightness 100% has a value of 3 right now. It has a value of 1 right now. Now comes the main question, how displacement works. If you look at both the images, 100% white color is the highest, 75% brightness is a little bit less, 50% brightness is the size of 100% brightness and so on. You can clearly see from this example that the black color has no height. But as the color is getting brighter, the height is also increasing. White color will have the maximum height value you have defined in the amount parameter. Here. You can again look at this ramp. As the black color is getting brighter, the ramp is increasing. Hopefully this concept is clear to you. Now comes our main wall example. I want to apply this texture on this wall. 
and then use it for displacement. First, go to diffuse and apply this texture. Make sure that the texture is perfect. If it is not perfect, then do the unwrapping first. Now, delete this texture. I want this part to have the minimum height in displacement, this part to have medium height, and this part to have the maximum height in displacement. If I'm going to use it right now as it is in Maya, Maya is going to desaturate it internally and use it like this, which is not going to produce the right result because this is the brightest part that will have the maximum height. But I don't want it like this. I want this part to have the minimum height. And I want this part to have the maximum height, which is not going to happen right now. So I have to do some work on this texture. I have done some work on this texture. Let's explore it. First of all, I have divided this texture into three parts. For the medium height, for the maximum height, and the main, minimum height one. Close them. This was my original texture. I have applied labels on it and then a black layer to make it a little bit more darker. Then top part. Again, I have taken this small part and I have applied curves to make it a little bit darker. And for the middle part, which should have the maximum height, I have made it the most brightest. I have applied labels on it and make sure that it is the most brightest part. After that, I have applied a black strip over here. You can say a dark gray strip so that it doesn't get that much height that this part is getting. And then finally, an overall level to brighten it. Hopefully you guys can understand this thing. Now I'm going to quickly apply displacement over here. Right click, node selection, select the displacement node, click here, browse the file. This time I'm using the PSD and render. I can increase the height and accuracy from here, but I want more control. So I'm not going to increase it from here. To get more control, click on the mesh, make sure you are in the mesh or shape node, then go to attributes, V-Ray, click on displacement control. Scroll down and click on extra V-Ray attributes. Displacement amount, adjust how much the displacement affects the geometry. It is same as amount that you have previously seen. Increase the displacement amount to 3 and render. How to improve accuracy, save memory and render time. Again, I can do these things from here, but I can also do them from here. Scroll down and you can see them like this. This is the local setting for current displacement. Use max subdivision parameter to limit the amount of geometry subdividing. This will save memory and render time. Lower max subdivs will save memory and render time, but also lower the quality render. You can see that the time has decreased from 1 minute 33 second to 39 second because the max subdivs has reduced from 256 to 4. But if you look here, we have lost all the details. So increase your max subdivs to 32 and render again. Save the render. Now we have successfully decreased the max subdivs from 256 to 32 and save our memory. In this case, it hasn't decreased the render time too much, but we have successfully saved our memory. Now lower the edge length to 1 and render again. 
Remember, the lower the edge length value, the accurate the displacement will be. But be careful, render time will increase. Now you guys can see when the edge length was 4 and when the edge length was 1, the result has improved a lot. 4, 1, 4, 1. Next, I'm going to click on the mesh, go to its material, quickly apply the color, color texture. And for things like sand, I'm just going to apply the texture on the ground. I'm going to simply apply the displacement, click on displacement, click here and give it the same color texture. I'm not going to do anything on the Photoshop, just I'm going to simply render it and you can see the final result. So this is my final result. Hopefully you guys like this tutorial, uh, but before ending this tutorial, I just want to tell you guys one more thing and it is that if you at any moment you want to disable your displacement, simply select your, simply select your mesh, make sure you are in the mesh node and click here on none. Just like that, simply select this another mesh, make sure you are in mesh node and your controls are on. Simply click, click, go and simply click here and click on none and then render again. Now you guys can see that after clicking on the none in the displacement, it has ignored the displacement temporarily. I know that this was a long tutorial and I can end it in a very, very short time, but I have taken this time to make sure that the new guys or the beginners can clear their concepts about displacement. YouTube is a big community. There are guys who knows these concepts and they just want to know how the displacement is done in V-Ray. But there are also guys who don't know the concepts of displacement. So I have to keep in mind both the beginners and the intermediate users. Hopefully you guys like this tutorial. And if you like this tutorial, don't give, forget to give me a like, subscribe to my channel and please play the full video in the browser. Keep creating guys.